Yes, Mr. Robs? And Mr. Coe? Now we're going to look at a lesson today about parallel and perpendicular lines. And by the time you're done, you should be able to tell if lines are parallel. Okay. Find out if lines are perpendicular. Then finally, using the idea of parallel and perpendicular and the information from those to find the equation of a line. Okay, so we're going to tell if lines are parallel or perpendicular just by looking at the equations. Okay, yeah. so first let's look at parallel lines. I've got a demo here set up. I have an equation y equals mx plus b and a couple of sliders. So if I, just a quick review, the b value is my y-intercept. And if I change my b value here with a slider, you can see that it changes as well. So now it's 3.52. Here my B value is negative 4.27. Okay. okay, so let's put B at a, I don't know, let's put it at 2 as a nice round number. Similar with slope, if I move my slider, my slope can be different values. There's slope of 3. Now if I want to find it to be parallel, let's create a new expression here. Y equals, let's say, 2x plus, oh, 2x plus, uh, one. Okay, so there's 2x plus 1. If I want these lines to be parallel, the y-intercept can stay as it is. It's What I want to really concentrate is the slope. As I change this line, the slope of the red line changes as well. I want them to be the same direction. So if I look at my Oops. slope... Oh, there we go. There we go. At this time, those lines are parallel. And you can see it quite clearly that they are parallel. They're never going to touch. What do you notice about the slopes of the two lines then, Mr. Cole? Okay, so if M's the same, the uh -huh. slope's the same. And it doesn't matter what we make what we make B, right? We could move B all over the place. We could move that up and down a bit. Yep, it's going to still be parallel for different intersects. But as long as M's the same, the slope's the same. Right. So that's the key. Four parallel lines, slopes are equal... So M1 of the first line would equal M2 of the second line. Then parallel. So we look at the slopes to see if they're parallel. If they're equal, then they're parallel. And when you've got equations, you put it in MX plus B so that you can look at the slopes. Exactly. Yep. All right. Let's talk about perpendicular lines now. If we take our equation here, and let me put a new equation in here. I'm going to go Y equals parenthesis, negative 1, divided, oh, no, not negative 1, I'm going to go negative 1, divided by m, x plus, I don't know, let's say 1. And if I look at that, what do you notice about this graph here there, Mr. Cole? It looks like they're at right angles to each other. It does, and they it's, are indeed. No matter what I do with this M, uh, we can see. Yep. We can see that they are always perpendicular. So I have M and I have negative 1 over M. Well, what does that mean I've done? Well, it takes means I've taken my slope, I've <coughs> reciprocaled it, or flipped it, and I've changed the sign. So even if M is negative, this perpendicular one will be positive. Okay, so one's always negative, one's always positive, right? Right. Okay, so if we want perpendicular lines, so for example, if I have my first slope is 3 quarters, my perpendicular slope, I flip the fraction, reciprocal, that's 1 over m, I flip it, and I change the sign. Those two are perpendicular. Okay. If I have, let's say, negative 7 as my slope, a perpendicular slope. It's going to be positive. It's right. going to be 1 over 7. Right. Change a sign, flip the fraction. And so I know if m equals a over b, the perpendicular slope, flip the fraction, b over a, change the sign. Okay, okay. nice. Right. And one of the things we can also do is we can use the idea that of these being reciprocals to, to show this one other thing. So if I take this example here, if I take m times the perpendicular one, which is 3 quarters times negative 4 over 3. If I multiply those, well, the 4's cancel, and the 3's cancel, and I'm left with 
1 times negative 1 is negative 1. 1 times 1 is 1. I get negative 1. If I do it with the other pair, negative 7 and 1 7th, negative 7 times 1 7th, again, I end up with negative 7 over 7, which is negative 1. Seems to be a pattern there. Okay, so if you, if you get asked to show that two slopes are perpendicular to each other, that's quite a nice, quick, and easy way of doing it. You can just show that the two slopes multiply to give negative 1. All right, so if my slopes multiply to get negative 1, then I know they are perpendicular. Okay. Okay. And then the other way to, to um, describe them is just to remember negative reciprocal. Right. It's important. Negative to... reciprocal. <laughs> nice. <laughs> In case you missed it the first time, it's negative reciprocal. <laughs> it's almost Halloween or past Halloween. I'm feeling spooky today. Okay, so let's do a couple examples of this scenario. Find the equation of a line in standard form that is parallel to this and through the point. Well, we know to make an equation of a line, we always use y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. That's our key. And so I know I need to find my slope and my point. Well, I've got a point here. My point, x1, y1, equals 1, 3. I need my slope. And my slope is going to come from this equation. It needs to be parallel. But reading the slope from there is quite challenging. I have to find the slope. What would you do to find the slope when it's in this form here, Mr. Cole? I would rearrange that and get it y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to subtract so, the 2x. Yep. And then divide by 3. So let's divide everything separately by 3. We get negative 2 thirds x and we get add 5 over 3. Yep. And our slope then is simply here. Yeah, don't say that the slope is negative 2 thirds x. The slope is just the negative 2 thirds. So. Correct. So my slope is negative 2 over 3. Okay, so we have our information we need. We just have to plug it into our line now. We go and I'll change color for this. I'll change it. Let's do red. y minus y1 is 3 equals my slope, negative 2 thirds, x minus 1. Okay. okay. Now, so which form are we getting this in? Standard form. Standard form. Uh, so we don't want fractions. No fractions allowed. So how do we get rid of our fraction? Times by 3. Multiply everything by 3. And so when I do that, I get 3y oh, minus 9 equals those threes cancel, two. minus 2, x minus 1. 3y minus 9 is negative 2x plus 2. Now standard form means the x have to come over. So I have 2x plus 3y minus 9 is 2. Add the 9, and I get 11. This is a parallel equation. There we go. Now that, that first equation, the, the y minus y1, might be new to, to a few of you. Right. Well, they would have seen it on the last podcast ah, last night. Ah, of course. We're doing them out of order. Ah, I see. <laughs> so it should be familiar to everybody. It should be familiar to everyone. But I okay. do want to make note, here is the line that has to be parallel till 2x plus 3y is 5. Here is our answer. So 2x plus 3y equals 5. Notice these numbers in front are the same. That is true if they are parallel. All right, the one last example to look at, perpendicular. Write the equation line in standard form. It's perpendicular to this through the point. So again, I need m and I need a point. Well, this m is 2 thirds. So if I want a perpendicular m, what's that going to be? Well, we need the negative reciprocal, so negative 3 over 2. You didn't say that right. You need a negative reciprocal. <laughs> <laughs> so we flip it to negative 3 over 2. And there's our slope. Our point is negative 2, 5. And what's our, what form do we use again? Sometimes I forget. What are we? Y minus... So Y minus Y1. 
equals m x minus x1. Now remember, we, the, the x and the y are just part of our equation. The y1 and the x1, in this case we've got y minus 5, because that's y1, equals negative 3 over 2, x, and then minus negative 2, so add 2. Alright, that'll be an add. Alright, so... Get rid of the fractions. Get rid of the fractions. Again, we multiply by our common denominator, which is 2. And when I do that... We I get 2y minus 10 equals negative 3, lots of x add 2. Because those will cancel. Yep. So can distribute that. Negative 3x minus 6. And then we'll add 3x. Add 3x. Plus 2y minus 10 equals negative 6. Add 10. Plus 2y equals add 10. 4. So up four. 10 from negative 6. And so here is my equation. That's perpendicular to this line here. Okay. Nice. So it was almost the same. We just had to start thinking about the, the gradient. That's the only difference with right. that and the first one, right? Right.